Hello and welcome back. Uh, the Christmas tree is gone. Uh, my daughter, I stole it from her and she took it back. Apparently that was not okay. I have a, a pretty much teenage daughter, so you got to pick your battles. But I am wearing my holiday sweatshirt to try to. It's the it's the main hunter, uh, deer hunting sweatshirt to try to celebrate. But anyway, in this video I want to show you uh, a new feature in SightWise. Now the, the caveat to this video is this is not this feature I'm about to show you is not available in the 3.3 release because it's so new uh, in SightWise we didn't have time to fully test it. If you want access to this, uh, just reach out to us. We can provide you a build with access to what we're, what's called buffered ingest. Uh, in SightWise, it's a quick credit card payment. It's No, we'll, we'll give you access to it to try it out. Um, so this is really around SightWise and a new feature called buffered ingest. And the reason for this feature primarily is a significant cost savings and in ingestion of data into SightWise. If you're not, not familiar with SightWise, uh, let's jump up here. You know, here it is, it's a service from AWS. You can kind of think of it as a time series database on the back end, but then a bunch of new features and, and AWS is putting a lot of effort into using this as a primary ingestion point for manufacturing data. So whether it's moving the UNS, you know, into site-wise and or just model data in the factory. So they're putting a lot of effort into this uh, tool set. And it's, pre it's pretty impressive. Uh, and I think you'll see with buffered ingest, uh, less expensive uh, and, and pretty still pretty easy. So what I'm going to do uh, briefly is the first thing I'm going to do in, in high bite is I've got model data. So I've, I've modeled this company model. It's what I use in some of the other demos. And if I read this, it's a pretty complex payload ISA 95 hierarchy. So I have nothing in SiteWise today. SiteWise like HiByte has the concept of models and, and assets. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into my SiteWise connector and we're just going to write that out as is. And what HiByte's going to do, <laughs> which, which one is it? Uh, it's this one. All right, so it, I'm just going to pick one of these. We'll call it the real-time output. This is the existing output that's in 3.3, uh, and it uses the API to write actual data out. But the first thing I'm going to do is go uh, do a test write in high byte and just write this out. What you're going to see is it's going to come back and say pending, you know, building models. It's going to build all the models in that payload. It's going to build all the assets, link all the hierarchy. It's calling the API to do that, and so it take, takes a minute to kind of build it out at first. If we jump over to models, you'll see those models are getting built out one by one, and you have to, it's a its a synchronous process, so you kind of have to wait. So while this is kind of building out, uh, what we do is we build out the models and assets in site-wise to represent what's in high byte, right? And then we start moving data. And when we move data, there's something called, uh, let's go find it, site-wise batch put API. So this isn't the existing way, the legacy, it's not legacy, it still exists today, right? This is the way to get real-time data into, into SiteWise. So it's this concept of value quality time stamp. You kind of format the data and send it in. You try to buffer it in chunks of 10 by 10. So for each measurement, you can put in 10 values. It's a little complex to go do the math and, and actually the code <laughs> to make this all work. But at the end of the day, it gives you real-time data. So you're talking like maybe not 100 millisecond latency, but pretty close to network level latency of data into site-wise, it's fast. But if you're moving mass amounts of data, right, like, you know, 5,000 tag values a second, it, it becomes pretty uh, prohibitively expensive uh, on the ingest side. So to solve for this, uh, site-wise released a feature called buffered ingest. And, you know, it's uh, you know cost, cost efficient path, <laughs> you can see they use. So, uh, Really what buffered ingest is, is instead of going directly through the SiteWise API, it goes to an S3 bucket in either a CSV or a Parquet format. What I'm going to show you is in the CSV format. So the file's in a standard format. That file goes into S3. We then call, or someone then calls uh, the SiteWise API to say, hey, go pick that file up. And what it allows you to do is, it you know, can reduce the cost of ingest by up to 10x. Uh, and the latency is actually not that bad. It's, it's about a minute... Uh, maybe a little more, but as low as a minute latency, which for a lot of manufacturing use cases of getting this data up to cloud, you know, buffering it with the cost savings is pretty, it, in my opinion, is pretty reasonable. So, all right, with all that spiel, let's jump back and I'll show you how it works in high bite. So you can see we've kind of built out this model. You, you didn't see all these model definitions in high bite, but if we went over, you'd, you'd see there's the pump and the sub processes and all that. So that's reflected in site wise. And then the assets as well, you can see with a nice hierarchy view, 
you know, if we had blown out that JSON, you, you could see that representation, right? We go to bottling and line. You can see this is ISA 95-ish. We go down to pump. Uh, for example, we look at measurement points, and we can see there's the different measurement points. Now, there's no data yet. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is go back and do a second write. And this is a real-time write. So this is going to go through that API, which, again, is more expensive, but it's in near real time and get that data up into uh, site-wise. And you can see these values filled in. I, I didn't scroll all the way to the right, so you couldn't see. They weren't there before, but now these values are, are filled in from that API call. Okay, so that's real-time ingest. That's what works in 3.3 today. The enhancements, will, which will go in the next version, but again, if you need it sooner, let us know, uh, and we'll send you out a build with this, is to add buffered ingest support. So what that means is that the, the first level of this is you need to go configure a few additional settings in the connection, which is to say, you know, what S3 bucket do you want to use to create the files? And optionally, you can put in a file key. So what we would, uh, <laughs> which I spelled wrong, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter. H-I-G-H. I'm a terrible speller. Uh, but anyway, this is the prefix for the files that we put in there. And then this just says, hey, after SiteWise ingest the file, delete it. And you could turn that off if you want. It's probably suggested it's, it's on by default. And there is a little configuration. Let me see if I can find it. What we'll send you with the build, and this will eventually be in our user guide, is how to go into SiteWise. You have to go into SiteWise and enable this new feature. Uh, you then need to just set up an IAM permission so that we as the IM, as the client connected in have access to the S3 bucket to go create files in there and the API and SiteWise to go trigger the upload of those files. So there's a little bit of IAM configuration um, and just S3 permissioning. And this talks about the IAM role you need to set up. And then the rest of it is, is on the high byte side, how to configure. So we'll send you this document on how to get uh, SiteWise configured properly. And then you just drop this information into high byte and then what's what's really cool about this feature is all you do is it's the same output, right? Like I could go back and use the same output. You know, this is configured the same as the buffered one. The only difference is you set from real time to buffered. So now that I have uh, buffered, let's just go in real quick and look at uh, timestamp on one of these. So eight fifty three seventeen. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is go to instances and drag that same input in, but now this is going to go through the buffered pass. So I'm going to write to S3 and then trigger the upload in site-wise. This is going to say pending because it's a fair amount of data. And I'm running out of my development environment, so let me make sure I'm not hitting a breakpoint. I'm not. So the first write took a little longer than after that. It's just a few seconds. So these are creating files in SiteWise. And this is the S3 bucket. So if I were to refresh, it might pick it up faster than we can see it in here. But if I were to refresh in here, it, it did. So these are files created by SiteWise to kind of manage this bucket and the indexing and ingest. The files I created have already been ingested, so they've been deleted. Uh, and the way we can verify that is if we go into SiteWise, you can see 855.58. So that's pretty fast, right? Now the, the one the one caveat is if you take a real time input that's that's in real time mode, uh, sending out the site wise, and you just switch it to buffered, so you're creating really small file font sizes. There is a cost calculator out there on this. It's actually like the second hit. Uh, I think it's this. Yeah, they give you example pricing, and then there is there is an actual calculator to help you. Uh, figure out costs, but the real the real important point is if you're sending real time data on buffered and you're sending it through this buffered approach, it can actually be more expensive to put it in S3 and then call the upload for small data sets. I think the optimal payload I wrote it down somewhere is around ten to twelve thousand value quality timestamps per file. So that's data changes per file you can think of. So it is recommended if you're using this feature in High Byte, you probably want to go in. And this is some other pipeline I created, but you probably want to go in and, and run it through a pipeline in High Byte and use our size buffer to say, you know, a window size of 10,000 values or, or something. Uh, you have to go kind of do the math and then send that out buffered output. And if you do that, you'll end up with larger file sizes and you'll reduce cost. Now, the caveat there is that if you're buffering data, you're reducing the real timeness, right? That's the delay in that data getting to the cloud. So there's a, you know, cost versus time uh, element there. 
But again, this is a brand new feature. This is not in the 3.3 release, but we do want to show it for folks that are using SiteWise. In my opinion, you know, if you're using SiteWise with, and you, you don't need the data faster than a minute or up to a minute, I would probably use buffered input buffered ingest by default honestly uh and then use real time only in in the odd cases where i need that data again you know 100 millisecond 200 millisecond whatever, whatever network latency level uh but buffered ingest is probably and you just saw how easy it is to use it's probably the preferred path so if you're, you're interested in that uh reach out we'll send you a build with that in it with the instructions and then that'll be in our next uh next release all right thanks